Welcome to our presentation. I am Sophie, and today I will be presenting together with my colleague Daphne. We will be presenting the project that we've been working on over the past few months. This project measures the performance of video conferencing systems. This is useful for users to understand which video conferencing system is actually best to use. And this is interesting for researchers to understand how to measure the performance of the video conferencing systems. We will show some preliminary results and we think some surprising take home messages. The global pandemic has forced society to shift to remote education and work. This shift is enabled by various video conferencing systems such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams and Jitsi. The number of people using this system systems grow significantly over time, as illustrated by this graph. Unfortunately, only limited research has been performed about the performance of these video conferencing systems. To address this issue, we conducted research to measure the performance of video conferencing systems. Our main contributions are the definition of an experimental method to evaluate and compare the performance of video conferencing systems in the real world. Second, we developed an automated tool that allowed these real world experiments. A sneak peek of the interface of this automated tool is shown over here. Lastly, we conducted a performance analysis ourselves using the video conferencing systems Zoom, Teams and Jitsi, where we focused on web clients. Before we show the results of our research, we will define a video conferencing system. A video conferencing system usually consists of two components, the client side and the server side. These two components are connected over a network. The user interacts on the client side through their device and then accordingly access the web browser or an application. The user will record data of their face and their audio, and this video and audio data will be sent to the server. Accordingly, the server sends the audio and video data of other people in the meeting room back over this network. The client side is within our control because the devices are owned by the actual users. The server side is not because these servers are owned by commercial video conferencing systems and we don't have access or knowledge about this internal architecture. That is why in our research, we will focus on the client side. We designed our experiments and experimental tool according to the design method introduced by the at-large design team. This design method is illustrated by the model over here. Most importantly, we started by defining the requirements, then we iterated and co-evolved over these requirements. From these requirements, we built a prototype to execute the experiments, and we first exhaustively tested it before we actually executed the experiments. To realize the experiments, we developed an experimental tool that allows the performance measurements of the video conferencing systems. The architecture of this tool is shown in this model. The main advantage of this experimental tool is that conducting the experiments becomes very easy and automated. The experimental tool consists of two main components, namely an automated meeting client and an orchestration server to manage the experiment. The automated meeting client this is a Docker container that runs on each client machine that enters the meeting from the video conference. This meeting client is responsible for measuring the system data, such as the CPU usage and the memory usage of this client device and communicates this at the end of the meeting to the orchestration server. The orchestration server keeps tracks of all the stage of all the various clients in the meeting. Also, this orchestration server provides a front end and the researcher can define the settings of the experiment, such as the number of users that should be in the meeting and which video conferencing system to use. 
So for example, if the researchers defines an experiment with six clients, the orchestration server waits for six clients to join the experiment. Accordingly, the clients start measuring the system metrics and at the end, they communicate these results to the orchestration servers, which saves this in a database. It is also possible to run multiple experiments in a row using the experimental scheduler code. We ensured that in our experiments, we compared the metrics recorded by one client device. This was the experimental tool. Now I will give the word to my colleague Tafni, who will explain the results of our experiments. Thank you, Sophie, for the introduction. I will elaborate more in the experiment setup and a few surprising results. We chose Teams, Zoom and Jitsi as the three video conferencing systems. Teams and Zoom because they are popular in both industry and academia and Jitsi because it is an open source variant. The metrics considered were network bandwidth, CPU usage and memory usage because these were feasible to collect from the client side of these systems. Metrics such as Jitter, which we had initially considered had to be dropped because they require access to the server side, which is not possible due to the black box nature of these applications. The experiments were divided into three types. First for scalability to see how these systems are formed with an increase in number of clients. Then Zoom web and the desktop app were, were compared because the desktop app is more popular. Finally, we also compared audio and video workloads as people mute themselves, turn off their videos during meetings and we wanted to see its impact. This is one of our surprising results where we measure the memory consumption for five minutes for the three systems. And we use a line graph to plot the same. Having a low value shows the system is better. And we can see Teams and Jitsi have a pretty stable memory utilization of one GB. While Zoom Web has memory, has a linear increase in memory till up to five GB. And the stabilization of 5 GB is a memory limit for a single tab in Google Chrome. We attribute the high memory consumption due to a memory leak. And even the high memory usage is substantiated by forum posts. This is quite surprising as we, we use these tools quite frequently. So finding bugs or such a major issue in these systems is surprising. So we would recommend memory critical systems to avoid using Zoom web and use Teams or Jitsi instead. This is another of our results where we measured the resource usage variability for these three systems. This, this is a complicated plot, so I'll explain it in detail. The left plot shows the memory usage. The middle plot shows the number of CPU cores used and the right plot shows the bandwidth. Each plot is subdivided into three subplots because of the scalability study. And each subplot, the values are being plotted using a, bar, using a box plot where the white dot represents the mean, the black line represents the median. The left whisker is Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquantile range. And the more values are towards the left, the better the system is in terms of resource consumption. As we can see, Teams and Jitsi use, utilize low memory as compared to Zoom Web. Even the interquantile range for Zoom Web is very high, showing the high variability. The same holds true for bandwidth, where Zoom Web again has all the outliers and it has higher variability and consumption. In Teams, the bandwidth, lower bandwidth consumption is also due to our architectural choice where only the video of the speaker is shown. But overall, across three metrics, we would recommend using team, Teams as it performs the best. Another surprising result was the decrease in values in some cases 
with an increase in number of clients. This we attribute to a decrease in video quality with an increase in clients, but this has to be looked into further. We also had other findings where we compared the desktop app with the web app and we also had audio video results. And for further details, I would recommend you to look at our technical report. Finally, I would like to stress that our tool is a useful way to select these video conferencing systems. Just buying a higher end laptop to solve these issues is not a one-stop solution as that's more harmful for the environment. And it also creates a barrier in education as these tools are also used for online learning. Finally, for our take home message, we would say that we observed a significant difference in client side resource usage and teams performed the best. There was a, also a varying response with an increase in number of users. In some cases, the values decreased while others had increased. Also the choice of video conferencing system matters as we found a potential memory leak in Zoom web. But the black box nature of these applications makes them difficult to research and to verify our conjectures. Finally, more research is required, especially for larger level meetings and for looking into application level metrics like image quality. Thank you.